Hi, this is Ninja2 Dan, and we're covering 7.62 High Caliber. For this guide, I'm going to be covering factions, basics about a few missions, and we're going to be covering um, general character stats, not your attributes and skills, but other stats. As a warning, because this load is from later in the game at a higher game level, there are going to be certain areas on the map that have been uncovered. There's also going to be some equipment that is shown not available earlier on in the game. So if you're not wanting to see some of those spoilers, you might want to skip this video. When you look at your map, you're going to see different colors of different locations. Those colors are generally going to designate the faction that operates it. Uh, the green ones are going to be your government forces, so you have your general starting cities along with a few other locations that they are operating. Red are going to be rebels. The purplish pink color is going to be one faction which are sort of a drug cartel. Orange are generally going to be something that is not controlled by any particular faction or they are going to be factions that have been added later on through the Blue Sun mod. Anything that is blue are going to be sectors that you personally control. And this uh, the teal, turquoise looking color are going to be different sections that are owned by forces in the neighboring nation of Polinero. As a note, when you are starting off early in the game, as mentioned previously, you'll have the ability to take control of the army base. That is your first home area. That is also where you acquire your radio. When you are taking over towns, you are then able to earn uh, different taxes from them. You can also hire militia to protect them from attacks. You can also use the radio to send your militia to other towns. Uh, for example, if I wanted to take over this town here, Campuchino, I would be able to go onto the radio and order my mercenaries to all go to that town. That way, when I decide to attack it, I'll have a little bit of backup. As you're doing the game, uh, the default game has one of two branches. You can either start doing missions for the government side or you can do missions for the rebel side. By advancing far enough through their mission chain, you are going to have to, for the most part, um, devote yourself to that one faction. That means that the f opposite faction is going to be hostile to you. So, for example, if I were to join with the rebels, the army forces from the government are going to try and attack me when they see me. If I'm traveling along the roads and I see one of their units, if they come into contact with each other, a fight will start. They're also going to have army forces try to take over any of the sectors that I own. That is why your militia becomes important. The same is equally true if I'm with the government forces. The rebels will try to come in and fight me if I encounter them along the roads. They will also try to send forces in to take over my, my locations. With the Blue Sun mod installed, you are able to follow a certain mission chain that will allow you to complete the game without having to actually go towards government or rebel forces. For the most part, that means you are able to hold your territories without them being attacked. At the time of this guide, there is a slight bug with the latest release of Blue Sun mod where the militia system does not work properly. It is very difficult or impossible for you to sustain any militia. So that will pretty much be covering the basics of factions. As far as character stats,
when you look at your character itself, um, you're going to see their weight. This is something you want to really pay a lot of attention to. The total weight is going to be how much that they have on them at this time to include everything in pockets, in backpacks, body armor, weapons, ammo, everything. The maximum weight is going to be how much that that character can carry without becoming overburdened. The energy output is going to be as they move around, as they perform actions, how much energy are they using in order to do so. If their energy is going to be at a lower output, that means they can run farther without getting tired. As they get tired, you will see the blue energy bar start to decrease. Once it gets to a certain point, they're no longer able to run. If the energy bar goes all the way down, that character will then become unconscious. Generally, you're not going to have the energy bar go too far down unless you are hit. Um, you can get knocked unconscious by getting hit with certain weapons. As I'll explain later on, ammunition can not only cause hit point damage, but it can also cause shock damage. If your character does become overburdened by carrying too much, you will start to see changes. So for example, if I throw on the radio, it's only increasing his weight slightly beyond what his maximum weight allows. That means he's putting more than 100% of his energy output, which is going to mean that he has an 11% movement slowdown. So he will run 11% slower than what he's potentially capable of. Again, if you have a certain amount, it will be in orangish yellow. But if you're carrying a substantial amount of overweight, it will turn red. In this case, he is going to be slowed down 124%, which means as I try to move this character around, even at a run speed, it is almost that of a walk. So if you really need to get around somewhere fast, you want to make sure you definitely do not have your character overburdened. Every single item in the game doesn't matter if it's one single bullet or a piece of paper, it will all have a weight to it. The exception are going to be quest specific items. That is, items that are for quests will be placed into this separate section. So, for example, this small key here. Once we take over the army base, we are given a key which will open the safe. It has a zero weight. So everything that goes into that spot is at zero. So you can carry whatever you want without it weighing you down there. Again, as a spoiler, when I access my locker, you are likely to see plenty of items, weapons, equipment that are not available early in the game. A big example might be the night vision optics that are on characters' inventories as well. And for this I'll be able to show you the inventory management system. Your characters have several different options as far as their inventory goes. You do have your hand slot Anything that they're physically carrying in their hands will be in this spot here. Their hand slots can carry basically anything. You can carry a backpack, pouches, weapons, gear. does not matter. For the most part, your hand slot will allow you to carry anything. You also have two different shoulder slots for each of your shoulders there are a limited amount of items that can be carried on your shoulders so for example this large medic bag will not fit on a shoulder night vision will not fit on a shoulder books cannot be carried on your shoulder rucksacks vests those all items cannot be carried on your shoulder certain items 
such as your field radio can be carried over a shoulder and weapons can be slung over your shoulder. In addition to the shoulders, you also have a neck slot, which is essentially the same as a shoulder slot. The only difference is when you look at your character in the game, pressing N will also open up that inventory. You're only going to see the one item on their shoulder at any given time. So if you have something on both shoulders, it'll primarily be what's on the one shoulder. As that item is moved into your hand, you'll then see the next one. Anything that is carried around the neck, though, you will not physically see it on your character model unless it's moved to a shoulder slot. For personal storage, you're going to have multiple slots. These dots will sort of lead you off into where everything is stored. Some of the first slots that you're going to be using are going to be the chest slot, which is going to be for vests. The reason I'm using this load is because greater than the game, you're going to have access to a lot more equipment. I'm able to show you a larger variety of that equipment. For vests, the best choices that I found so far are going to be these four styles. The earlier vest is going to be your assault tactical vest. You'll then get the standard tactical vest, a smurf tactical vest, and a mole tactical vest. All of these vests will have the same overall capacity. The only difference between these vests are going to be the west or sorry, the vest weight. So as I look at these, if you're looking down here in this box, you'll see that their individual weights does vary slightly, but it's not a substantially different amount. The main difference, though, is going to be the layout of the internal slots. Slots can either be a single, they can be a double, which will either be two horizontal or two vertical. You can have a four grid, which is two by two, and like this vest here has a six grid, which is a two by three. Depending on what ammunition you're going to be carrying, how that ammunition is carried, in other words, which magazine types you have, is going to choose, it's going to, sorry, determine which vest style is more preferable to you. Some ammunition is available in different magazine types. If we look at the inventory here and look at ammunition, you can get a good idea of how different ammunition is sized. Some of the smaller magazines are going to be a single grid. The majority of small arms are going to be using stick mags, which are vertical doubles. If you have larger magazines such as boxes or drums, they're a four grid. Some of the very long stick magazines are going to be a four grid. There are also a couple of magazines, though, that are horizontal. That will be two horizontal grids side by side. So depending on what equipment you are carrying, it is going to determine which vest is better suited to you. The earlier vests will have the two verticals that you would generally want to carry your magazines. But once you get later on at the game and you start using larger magazines such as drums or C mags, you're going to want one that has a four grid open. The other inventory slots that you'll have without anything are also going to be pockets. Your front pockets are going to be two large four grids. You will also have a variety of belts 
the first style that you'll have access to are a basic pistol belt with a holster. You'll see a four grid and a two grid. The way this is set up is any f four grid weapon will fit into that slot. While the magazines, as long as it's a one or two slot magazine, will fit into the magazine slot. Drums, for example, will not fit there. And as you can see, a standard item that is not a weapon will not go into that other slot. It is for weapons only. So things such as ammunition, magazines, ammunition, goggles, does not matter. This slot is only for firearms. It's useful for carrying a pistol or other smaller submachine gun as backup because it's a lot faster to access it out of this than it is to carry in a backpack. While it is still quicker to access it over your shoulder, in my opinion, it just makes it a little bit more convenient to be carrying it in the holster. You also will have a standard tactical belt, which the four slot will accept anything else. So I'll accept uh, handfuls of ammunition, your night vision goggles, anything that is equal to or smaller than those slots. Plus it has the two other slots. On this one you can see it has two accessory pouch slots, which I will cover in just a moment. Light tactical belts, again, different layout, but same overall capacity. Which belt you use is just going to be personal preference. Earlier on you will be limited to what is available to you, so you're going to just use whatever you can get your hands on. Later on, once you have access to all of them, this one for example has three double verticals, which would be good for storing either several vertical magazines or some of the double grenades, but you're free to carry just about anything else in here that will fit into it. One of the other options are going to be your pouches for the belts. Once a belt is worn, there are three styles of pouches. The standard ammo pouch will have six singles. Again, all of these have the same overall capacity. This model has three verticals, and this model actually is just one large six grid. As you can imagine, this model is going to be the best overall option because you can put whatever you want. If you do want to place individual singles along with doubles, you're free to do so, but you still have that room that if in the field you wanted to change out what's stored in there, you can do that at any time. This will also hold weapons, even if the weapon is a six grid. Those smaller pouches, again, do have their own weights. So it's up to you to choose whichever you want to use. The other option are going to be backpacks. There are a variety of backpack styles. There's the standard hiking backpack. And again, all backpacks have the same overall capacity, with the difference being the internal layouts. This one, for example, the grids are a maximum of eight grids, which is a two by four. Some of the longer weapons will not fit while smaller ones will. The other style is a more basic backpack because this one has wider slots. Even the longer weapons will fit. So if you have a habit of carrying additional weapons inside of backpacks for whatever reason, this is one of the few backpacks that will actually allow longer weapon length, but the accessory pouches that are inside of it are smaller. There's also another style of the hiking backpack. If you look at the color style, it is very slightly different, and its name is the Ranger backpack. Again, this one has a slightly different layout. It does have the longer length, 
free to carry no longer rifles and other weapons. The layout though is going to allow a little bit better placement of items. There are very few items that take up just one single space. There's also the tactical backpack which is a fairly newer design. Again it does offer a couple of the larger weapon length along with some of the smaller styles. You might also notice that with the Blue Sun mod there are a lot of these rucksacks that are included that have an icon on them along with a name that matches the icon. So for example this one has a picture of the camo kit and is named Camo Kit's Backpack. The primary purpose of these labeled bags is for inventory management and for better organizing of your storage. So for example, while I do have a few of the Camel Kits here, you go through them fairly often later on in the game if it's something you choose to use. Having 30 or 40 of them in your personal inventory is not a very good way of organizing. Unlike the stores, which will have the items stacked, your personal inventory in the locker does not stack anything with the exception of ammunition piles, individual rounds, further grenades, rockets, and boxes of ammunition will all be individual. So your inventory can get very cluttered very quickly if you have a lot of items. By using these rucksacks, for example a camo one, I can store inside of it nothing but the camouflage kits. So if I do start needing camouflage I can go to that backpack and know what's in it. Uh, same thing with grenades. You'll notice that the grenade backpacks carry the same name but they'll have a different icon. So for example the picture on this pack here the grenade is the M67 which inside of it are the M67 frag grenades. This one on the other hand is going to show offensive concussion grenades because it does have the singles where these ones will not fit. I usually fill those with the standard grenades but overall it is used to store that type of grenade. Same thing with the smokes. You're free to use those for whatever you want. For example medical I have a variety of medical items, but I know that in general this is for medical supplies. Oftentimes you will see that there are backpacks with items you do not personally use. For example, this game has what are called drugs. These are combat drugs that can either increase your adrenaline, decrease shock. I generally do not use them, but they are very valuable for selling off to the enemy. Or, sorry, uh, selling off to vendors. So once you've looted them from the enemy, I will generally just sell them off for the cash. The nice thing is that there are not backpacks labeled with everything. So for example, for the rifle grenades, for the anti-barrel grenade launchers, there is no backpack with that icon on them. If you're wanting to store them, such as I have in my vehicle supplies ready to reload myself in the field. I do have a backpack with drugs, but inside of it I'm carrying these Soviet grenades. There's also a pack here with the knife icon and name. I do not use knives. Instead I'm using it for the NATO grenades. So by using those you're able to keep your storage a lot cleaner, more organized. As far as the way that your inventory works, if you are going through and using the different bags, which I'll see if I can find my old one. you'll see that with the large selection of slots that are in these, not all of those slots are accessible from this portion of the screen. So for example, if you're wanting to access items that are in additional pouches, you cannot access them from here. You must press I and go to your inventory 
in order to be able to pull those items out. You do have the capacity to store them on your character, but they are not used, say, in combat. Pulling items out of pouches that are not shown on this screen does take longer, so those upper pouch slots are items that you're going to want to use quicker, such as combat. It's where you're going to want to carry magazines, grenades, medical supplies, anything that you're going to want to use very quickly in the middle of battle. Same thing goes with if it's an item inside of a backpack. Pulling an item out of a backpack will take substantially longer period of time. If you do have extra weapons, you want to either carry pistols or submachine guns inside of the holster style, longer rifles, shotguns, different weapons like that you can carry over your shoulder and neck. It's a lot faster to access them that way than it is to pull them out of a backpack or pocket. That will pretty much cover how your personal inventory works and as far as your weight limits work. One thing to note is that your maximum weight, as I noticed in a previous guide, um, one of the basic attributes that you're going to want to concentrate on is your strength. A character's strength is going to determine how much weight that that character can carry. For example, my medic has a low strength, so at this time her carry weight is fairly limited. If she wanted to carry larger items, it's going to make it more difficult. That is definitely obvious with Paquito, one of the other characters. He definitely needs to level up his strength because at this time, carrying the weapons that he has, he has already slightly exceeded his weight allowance, so he is already moving at a very slight slowdown. In comparison, though, my primary character that was still carrying all of his weapons and accessories was still slightly below his max weight, so he did not have any slowdown. When you have characters such as machine gunners, grenadiers, close quarters people, you're going to want them to have a, a much higher weight capability. Your close quarters character is probably going to be carrying submachine guns, shotguns, weapons that are better suited to closer range. And they generally will not have as much weight to them. Uh, one reason also is that the close quarters weapons will generally have a smaller barrel length, which is going to provide lower accuracy, which is just fine when you're doing close quarters combat. On the other hand, though, close quarters characters, you're going to probably want to slap on larger body armor additional plates, better helmets, so those alone are going to add to their weight quite a bit. If they don't have a weight limit that allows them to wear thicker armor, that kind of makes them less effective for close range battle. Same thing with your machine gunners. Machine guns do have quite a bit of weight to them. You're not going to give one of your little skinny weaklings, an M60 or a large machine gun, they're just not even going to be able to pick it up, let alone fire it and control it. So for your larger machine gunners, having that high strength level is going to mean they can carry more weight. With your snipers, generally the weight limit that they have starting off isn't going to be as big of a deal because a lot of the earlier sniper rifles are not as heavy. As you get further into the game, and you have access to some of the larger caliber sniper weapons. Uh, a good example being the Barrett. This is a very heavy weapon system. By trying to give a sniper a heavy weapon system along with a sufficient enough of ammunition, if their strength is low, they're not going to be able to carry that weapon in addition to a lot of the other essential equipment that you might be trying to give them, such as body armor. And at that point of the game, I definitely do not recommend sending anybody out without at least a basic of body armor. This sniper, for example, he still has a slightly low strength level, so it does limit his weight a little bit, which is why he's living more of a 
a slightly lower vest than what the rest of my team would be carrying. Once his strength is leveled up, I can start giving him better armor. But his weapon system and the accessories that he is carrying are getting him fairly close to his max weight limit. But you definitely do want to keep an eye on what they are carrying and how it's affecting their weight and slowdown. Again, for example, a medic, they might not be needing to fire the weapon as often as they are going to have to be close to your people in order to heal them as needed. For me personally, I like to make sure that my medic has substantial body armor. That way, they're one of the last people to go down. A medic that goes unconscious obviously cannot heal themselves. They might have to be kneeling over other people, healing them while they're having shots in their direction. By having a better body armor on, they can take those hits longer while they're still healing up. but that is something that can be covered in a later section. So that will cover the basics of all your initial equipment and storage.